Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you this week from downtown Indianapolis in Gainbridge Fieldhouse, right in the heart of downtown Indy, undergoing a dramatic transformation. This weekend, really one of the first opportunities for fans to come in and get a first look at what has been a three-year, $360 million project to create uh, what is being termed the Fieldhouse of the Future. The scope is really enormous. The second largest renovation in NBA history history behind only Madison Square Garden. Now, there is new seating throughout, reconfigured, remodeled and expanded suites, a new entry pavilion, a new main concourse with all new concessions that will utilize cashless transactions, it's technology, a big focus of this project here. And also a very dramatic and visible change on the balcony level, including added glass to the standing room only area to provide dramatic views of the Indy skyline, as well as look down on game action and there is massive construction outside the field house as well on what will be bicentennial unity plaza and an entertainment complex that will include an ice skating rink larger than the one at rockefeller center all of this feeding into additional major projects nearby that stand to transform the near east side of downtown indianapolis we'll have more on that in a moment but first all of this feeding into additional major projects nearby that stand to transform the near east side of downtown Indianapolis. And joining me now from Gainbridge Fieldhouse with more on this massive project, a potential impact as well, Mel Raines, the President and Chief Operations Officer at Pacer Sports and Entertainment. As always, Mel, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, three years. A lot of work. What's uh, are you ready to breathe a sigh of relief <laughs> after yeah. uh, this big project? Yeah, I am. We we had post Malone last Sunday, and it went really smoothly. I think the fans coming really enjoyed the building, and we're excited. We've got a really full slate of events coming. I want to give people a, kind of an inside look at what they're going to see when they come down here and Fan Jam. I know you're hosting that uh, on on Sunday, uh, a big event, a chance, a big chance for folks to check this out. One of the most recent things uh, up on the third third level, kind of the balcony level. Uh, new seating throughout the building and things. But what's interesting to me is you've opened that up. Uh, a lot of glass, you can see the skyline, a lot of congregating and uh, uh, that type of thing up there. Yeah, part of what we really wanted to do was bring downtown into the building and then bring the concourses into the seating bowl. And the, one of the bigger things we did was this new Kroger sky deck on the west side. We took seven rows of seats, seats out and built a double decker sky deck that will open at the end of November. And so it's got amazing views of downtown. And we think just offers another way for fans of different generations to enjoy events here in the building. Can you, you know, we talk about the size, the scope of this project, uh, second largest in NBA history, only to, to Ma Madison Square Garden. Uh, was there a was there a, a kind of a vision, an overriding kind of thing, what you wanted to accomplish? Because you did so much here, you know, seating, concessions, the technology, all those types of things, really, really kind of big stuff. What was the, the goal? Well, it started with Herb Simon really wanted to be sure that the Pacers were always in Indianapolis and Indiana and so the 25 year lease extension is where we started and we wanted to take this beautiful building that had such great bones and just modernize it. We wanted to keep the soul of the field house and create some new products for people to, to enjoy and then upgrade the seats and the concessions and the restrooms and the entire experience and so I think we've done that in a, in a really nice way to keep this building uh, a beloved asset in Indianapolis for another 25 years. Yeah you're physically you're going to see a lot of changes folks will they come down to Gainbridge Fieldhouse, but technology is is a big part, will be a big part of the fan uh, experience. Absolutely. So a big part of the renovation was everything from new Wi-Fi through the building. So when we have a full house, close to 18,000 people, and people want to be uh, texting pictures to their families or posting on, um, on Instagram, you can do that in pretty quick time. We also added things like IPTV, which is just a, a better way for us to run all the, we have hundreds of televisions throughout the building. Mm -hmm. So things like that, frictionless uh, grab-and-go markets where you just tap your credit card or your phone, take what you want and get out. I think it's about a 40-second transaction time, so you can get back to your seat quickly at the event. And so we've just added a number of technological yeah. enhancements. Well, you're talking, we're talking inside the field house here in these dramatic changes, but that's only part of the story because you go outside and folks will see 
activity, construction, yeah. and uh, Bicentennial Unity Plaza, an entertainment complex really coming to life, beginning to come to life. Yeah. Talk about that and, and why that's an important part of this whole vision. Yeah, one of the one of the things we really wanted to do was, was extend our footprint and to be able to activate much more year round. And so the plaza is that, Bicentennial Unity Plaza mm -hmm. is that vision. So we'll have everything from ice skating in the winter to hopefully roller skating in the summer, uh, basketball, community events all year round. We're hoping to ribbon cut that in May. We've got two great uh, sculptures that are going to be going in that I think will become must-see things here in Indianapolis when people come to visit or, or when you live here, when you come downtown, you're going to want to visit them. And then the new entertainment complex that we're building that will be done at the end of 2023. End of 2023, heading into 2024, big chance to showcase this with the 2024 NBA All-Star Weekend, right? Yeah, we're excited to host that event. It's just got a great international presence, international media, and people from all over the world follow that. Uh, Cleveland, who just hosted, mm -hmm. had a $250 million economic impact from hosting, and we hope to, to do a little bit better than that because they were doing it during COVID, and hopefully we'll be well past that. Yeah, but very cool. I know we're running out of time. There's a lot we can talk about. This can be, I think, will be a spark for other development in this area. Any way to, 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 to characterize the economic impact potentially, ultimately, over time from this project and some of the others that are going on in the area? Sure. So we're over $400 million when you take the entertainment complex, all the work we've done here. And then we know that the city's working on everything from the city market area, the jail site, just cat a corner to where we are, the new Signia Hotel, the redevelopment of the the CSX building and the mall. I mean, we're talking about billions of dollars just right here in the heart of downtown. Mel Raines, the president and chief operations officer at Pacer Sports and Entertainment. Mel, thanks for some great perspective and an inside look here. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Gary. Well, Mel talked about uh, some big projects uh, in the area and the potential impact. I want to give you some perspective, if you have not been downtown uh, lately, as to what these projects are, what they could mean in terms of impact. Right across uh, from us, the uh, old plain red brick former CXX building, about 100 years old, targeted for demolition in its place. Two high-rise buildings It could include a 225-room hotel, 250 apartments, retail space, about a 250 a million dollar development eyed by a group led by Pacers owner Herb Simon and just a couple of blocks away from their city owned property eyed for potentially hundreds of millions of dollars in development including the so called jail one side at Maryland and Delaware streets the city county building as well and don't forget the beleaguered circle center mall big plans for reuse expected to be released uh, in due time uh, there as well so after years of really not a lot of activity the near east side of downtown Indianapolis poised for some pretty dramatic growth.